Hi, I'm Danny. This is Hobby Hangout. Yay, the first one ever. I'm going to show you how to make stuff. Evan's here. He makes stuff too. Hey, wait, hey. It's Evan. We're going to show you how to make cool stuff. Uh, Tony's here too. Good morning. Also, Jeff Hanley, our social media dude. Yeah, they can't see us when you point at us. It's all right. <laughs> Announcements. <laughs> this, they've never been able to see us. <laughs> Announcements. We have them. <laughs> but welcome. This is going to be really fun. We're going to show you guys how to make cool stuff. That's the whole point of it. After we're done, you can go online on our online store, purchase the bits you see here, and make your own dope stuff. And we'll post that link for you a little bit. We later. certainly will. Announcements. We have a stream schedule. So Wednesdays, we have the Dev Hangout at 10. Thursdays, as usual, get your paint on. September 10th, we're going to have a staff showdown. And again, August 30th, we're going to have another hobby hangout. Actually, August 30th is today. That's today's So the next, uh, the I can't next even hobby read. hangout <laughs> is August 13th. August, September 13th. It's September. been September a long 13th. week. <laughs> so we also have a uh, hobby and terrain Instagram. Uh, if you like the content that you see here, uh, please make sure you go and uh, follow our Instagram. I'll be posting a lot of interesting content, uh, tips, tricks, just cool stuff to look at. Um, it's privateer underscore press underscore terrain at Instagram. Um, other cool things. Riot Quest is in stores. Everyone go watch the tutorial. The game is super fun. It's super neat. Go play. Uh, we were just then... playtesting a bunch of new stuff yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it stuff All you exciting. Can talk about? Uh, well, no, but we were we were loud and having a good time. Then there's Mini Crate. Mini Crate, sweet. We've got the brew, the brew bearer. Wow, that was hard for me to say. We've got some sweet L5R crate. Um, we have Savage Crate. Savage Crate Suite. Look at that Solomon Kane. Oh, Solomon Kane, the newest figure. Look at that King Conan. I just got my King Conan this morning. Dude, it's such a nice casting. Yeah, it it is. came out so good. Uh, yeah, so Mini Crate, go ahead and do that. So, anyway, I'm going to show you guys how to make a cannon. And we're going to go over some of the cool stuff that Evan made for the uh, big storm break table that a lot of people have been yeah, asking yeah. about. So, let's, say, let's take a look at, final look at that, the, what we're going to be the building cannon? here. Yeah. All right, so today. Yeah, that thing up on screen. We're going to be making this. I made this out of some very easy parts we found around uh, the warehouse. Some googly eyes, some plastic, some little bits of styrene. Um, it's really amazing what you can do with just random model parts and pieces of plastic that you find around. Turn, turn that over a little bit so we can see like the side wheels and things, Danny. Yeah, check that out. Getting used to how that camera thing works, right? So, yeah, you guys can see some really quick paint weathering. It's all just plastic tube. That thing's a googly eye. I'll show you how to do all of this shortly. We're basically just going to make one right here. Um, Evan is really good at making stuff out of styrene. Uh, no, I'm not. Yes, he is. Um, yes, the cannon totally does fire potatoes. Uh, this is something <laughs> Evan made. I'm going to show you guys that real quick. I'm going to make him talk a little bit through some of his process there sometime throughout the stream. That one might be better. Do that one on the main camera, Danny, because that one's just a little too big for that. There we go. So this is the uh, super awesome AA gun, basically. Yeah, it was yeah. the main made for the storm, on Yeah, for the storm break table that we did for lock and load. Yeah, if, you, if you've played on that narrative table recently, then you've definitely seen these parts. So I'll make him uh, talk through that a bit, too, later. But, uh, yeah, should we get, should we get started? Let's get going, stuff? yeah. Awesome. So tell, yeah. What, uh, so what kind of parts are you going to be using here? So this is a Warjack body. Um, it's resin, so I'm able to hack it up. So I took the uh, clippers, our sweet P3 clippers. I started by literally just like, and I did some prep so that we can kind of fly through this, but I started by clipping off the pack. Um, you can just use your knife and scrape it down. I hacked a section of it, you know, off of here. Um, so I just kind of like try to make things fit as best as I can, but I thought that this might work as a nice chassis for the wheels. I'm going to go in. I'm just going to tear it up with this. Uh, you can do it a little higher, Danny, a little closer to that War Machine logo. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Evan, what are your favorite things to build? My favorite things to build? Um, I'd say like hard surface objects, so 
you know, things like guns or uh, vehicles, things like that. Um, I also like scratch building uh, robots, but uh, I think that's for a different conversation. <laughs> Heaven on the side makes some really, really cool robots. They are very neat. And uh, after, after you're clipping there, you're just scraping off the excess with uh, just a plain X-Acto knife? Yeah, yeah, I am. And I, a lot of the time, so I'll use our hobby uh, X-Acto handle, right? And I'll, um, but I replace the blade actually with a scalpel blade. Yeah. Because I think that the steel the steel's better. So do you find like a, a rounded scalpel works better? Or, I or? do. So so if I'm – well, for this, since I need it to be flat, what I'm trying to do now, I should explain, is uh, I cut this gun piece here, right? I cut the, the back section off of this. I think this came from a Crucible Guard model. Yeah. Um, and I want it to be able to fit here. Mm-hmm. Now, we've got the input for the head, so I need to be able to scrape that down uh, so that this lays flat. Right. right, so I'm going in right now with just the uh, the edge of the flat exacto blade. Yeah, because it keeps everything super clean. And but, um, go ahead. If the if the resin's like giving you resistance, it's uh, always a good idea to heat it up either in like warm water or with a hair dryer, and uh, it'll be a lot easier to scrape away. Absolutely, and that's a really great trick because not only can you like repose things if you get it hot or put it in hot water, it actually yeah you can like cut right through. Yeah. It. Well, you could just you just warm up resin. Yep. And it, and oh you man. Can clip right I know in that. There. <laughs> it's super super cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to that. Hobby Hangout. Perfect sense. <laughs> like, yeah. This is the kind of stuff we're gonna teach you about. Um, now this is exactly, so one of your questions you asked was, uh, do I like to use a round blade? Yeah. Yes. So if I'm trying to get into a tight space, I tend to actually use a round blade. This is a, uh, number 15 scalpel blade. Throw that under the, uh, palette cam there, Danny, just so we can see that tip a little better. Yeah. Just in our normal, uh, hobby handle, but mm-hmm. it, it allows you to get around these edges very nicely. Um, and also I did a, I did a thing where I cut the backside off of it actually with wire cutters. Um, so that it right. fits so better. I can't it fits real right snug now. in there. It and fits it, it snug gives in you uh, less chatter or like skipping when you're doing a scraping motion. That's exactly right. Because if you just use it with the scalpel handle, it's going to want to like kind of yeah. flop around, right? So I kind of modify the blades. I, I make a lot of my own tools. Um, so anyway, uh, let's have some fun. Let's make some things. Yeah. Evan, how did you get into all this stuff? Um, it's just something like building model kits and stuff is just something I always done like since I was like five years old, like I don't know, building Gundam kits and like uh, Games Workshop stuff. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't what. Uh, ever since then, I've just like slowly just tried to, you know, make my own sculptures. Nice. And uh, and it seemed like in school you got into the whole like three D illustration thing, right? Where you uh, would set up a scene, um, photograph so, that kind of as your. So I actually went to school for illustration. Um, and I did a lot of independent studies where I was building models. But, uh, yeah, um, Which? Uh, I, I'm pretty much self-taught in terms of scratch building and model right. making, stuff like no, that. Absolutely. I think that a lot of us kind of come out that, that way, too. Like, we went to school for something kind of random and artsy, but we ended up falling in love with sculpture. Like, that's kind right. of what happened to me. I went to yeah. school for illustration as well. Um, now, something else I should mention that I'm doing right now is I am clipping off... Uh, this piece from the wheel so that it has something like a flat surface for me to glue right. onto. It also and that, sh- that's like just the extra axle that's on yeah, the piece already? The, yeah, exactly. And I, I, because I want this to fit and kind of fall under the... Uh, the arch of the arm wall. Exactly, exactly. It's going to act as a, what's the word, wheel well, you know, yeah. Yeah. almost inherently. Yeah. Like, so that's something I look for when I'm, when I'm planning a kit bash is I try to see, hey, you know, this piece, like luckily fits very, very snugly inside of this if I cut it here, right? So it actually, it, it does the work for me. Um, did you did you know that before you put those parts together? Was it something that you kind of like eyeball test I eyeball. fit or yep. was that just fortune? No, so so when I, uh, when I start a kit bash, I kind of, uh, I'll normally find reference, like a historical reference or something like that. So I pulled up a, uh, what is it, a howitzer? Yeah. Um, initially, we'll put this guy back here. Um, I pulled up a howitzer and I kind of used that just as a base uh, piece of inspiration to jump off of, right? Um, but then, yeah, I just walk around and try to find parts. I'll grab them and I'll, I'll kind of hold them together, see, uh, see, um, what's it called? And just see kind of what fits. Somebody's asking for a 120 base. Yeah, if we've got a 120 base, we can throw I it up not, there for, but I have the, for uh, scale, the 50, but we don't. The 50 mil base marker right here. Okay. So you can see. Uh, do it on the one, yeah, there's, the, there's a 40 mil base and a 30. Yeah, so there's the 40 mil. Built into the cutting mat. Scale, how big this thing is. 
Just so for Alec. It'll fit on a 50, but it's going to be a tight fit. There'll be a lot of overhang involved. A in lot it. of overhang. A lot yeah. of overhang. Um, all right. So now that I've cut this, uh, I'm actually going to leave the wheels off of it for a second. I want to fit and glue in the cannon. So let's see. Uh, while you're doing that, um, I have a question for Facebook chat. Why aren't you guys over on Twitch? It's a superior <laughs> streaming uh, environment. Come on. Who uses Facebook you, chat, man? <laughs> that that can go yeah. directly to Tanner, who is on Facebook right now. <laughs> Hi, Tanner. If you guys don't know, Tanner's one of our awesome... Uh, he's messaging us right now on chat. Uh, he's one of our awesome guys in production. One of our casters, yeah. Yeah, one of our... I mean, what is he? He's lead resonant he's metal now, He's lead right? caster, I think. Yeah. He's great. So... Yeah. Sticking this on here. A lot of people don't like using Zip Kicker. I do. I mean, it's pretty. It it <laughs> smells pretty nasty. It's super cancer in a bottle. Yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, I got deadlines. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, we're all gonna die one day. But, but I mean, you can use uh, baking soda, which yes, you have in front of you as well. I'm gonna show you that trick shortly. Um, so another good trick, which we actually uh, I did an insider about. Maybe Jeff can find it sometime about using. Uh, Baking soda to dry your super glue very, very quickly. And I'm actually going to show that. We have that one. We just haven't published it yet. Oh, so, really? Spoiler yeah. alert. I, I do want to cut in real fast because we've Sorry. had a couple people in our chat uh, saying, did I understand that correctly? Or are there going to be parts available for this in the store? The parts for this are available right now. I am posting the link into our chats. Um, so you can go buy the, uh, the parts package. Uh, to make this yourself, obviously, this is not a complete kit, so you right. will have to bring some of your own materials. Like uh, you'll have to pick up some, yeah, you some can, styrene tube and some glue and stuff. But know? you're certainly encouraged to to modify from how Danny's doing it, make it your own, or right. copy it exactly. Yeah, but uh, but you, that link will take you to those parts. If you can't get the styrene tubing for it, you can just make it with a smaller barrel. Exactly, exactly. Like, you can just have it be this, like, kind of stubby gun you see here. Um, where's my camera? There we go. So you can kind of see what I've got going on now. Um... I glued this down, it sits flush because we scraped that out. Uh, something I like to do if I'm just gluing resin to resin is I, uh, I take the hobby knife and I make sure I scrape at it and I score the end, like where it would glue down. That is something I always know that I'm supposed to do and I seldom ever do. Well, you know, normally our models fit together very well, so they're engineered in a way that you shouldn't, but when you're kit bashing, you're kind of, you can't rely on key fit because the point is like, um, finding parts that don't normally go together and making them look like they go together to make something new, right? Um, so, you know, it's kind of more important to score, I think, in kit bashing than it would be elsewhere. All right, let's so uh, Striker911 is asking plastic straw. I would say go out and find, like, an actual styrene tube because uh, plastic straw is probably not going to be very sturdy and mm -hmm. it won't glue probably very well um it's just a very thin material yes yeah, so i use i use plastic straws a decent amount but it's it, i have to pick and choose where to do it and yeah. i don't have it i always cut it very short very short yeah and i always actually input it into styrene yeah in the end because it is just so it's not durable and it takes paint the plastic takes paint Terrible. Oh yeah, because it's such a like terribly like a slippery it's, surface. It, yeah. yeah, it's and it's a it's a weird, very cheap plastic that does not like to take paint. And you can find styrene at pretty much any like arts and craft or hobby store. Yeah. So. Let's see. All right, so I'm gluing this wheel down. Kind of glued it at an odd angle. Whatever. It's a little cattywampus, but whatever. All right, so uh, this is the um, this is like the front guard from the uh, Assault Siege Chariot, right? And I thought it would look really cool, flipped upside down. It kind of fits really nicely over this gun, right? And I was kind of playing off of some of the reference that I pulled. Uh, so, but I wanted to add a top, like a kind of top area to it. So we're gonna toss this baking soda off of here. Sorry, Tony, I'm making a mess. What's the, yeah, get back to the baking soda. So you said that baking soda somehow can be used to yeah, yeah. Dry glue faster? Yep, so like your zip kicker, um, it's, it's a non-toxic zip kicker. So I keep it in this little uh, puff bottle, which you can buy from like specialty hobby stores. 
and it'll like puff a cloud of, uh, of baking soda out, and it will, um, it'll cure your super glue instantly. Now, the, the one, the reason I hesitate away from it sometimes is uh, if it's going to be an area that's super seen, it, it's a thick stuff, you know, it's thick, so it kind of gap fills, and it'll add this grit. However, I'll, you're never going to see the underside of this, so I want to like actually use that gap right. filling to its, you So know. you can kind of use it like a putty because you can sand it down, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's it actually have... super, super durable uh, yeah. when, it's, when it's mixed with super glue. Um, I've actually, I've actually tapped it. I've threaded it so I can run screws into it before. Mm. It's really, really strong stuff. All right. So anyway, I'm going to take a uh, measurement here of how tall the t or how long the top of this is. We're looking at about three and a half centimeters. Look at how official that is. I don't think I've ever used a ruler to measure anything when I've been <laughs> scale modeling before yeah. in my life. Which, which I know I am nowhere near. Uh, Danny and, and Evan's level when it comes to doing this, but it just pointed out how non-professional well, my approach is. You know, is. honestly, I, <laughs> I just eyeball a lot of things. Like, you don't have to be super precise. No. Like, it can be a little janky. In fact, it can, like, add to the model. Sometimes I'll, like, tell a story of, like, what this thing has been through. Absolutely. I just, uh, I just know I want this to. So I, I eyeball a ton, like, very, very often. Um, but I know I want this one to fit in a certain, like, this has to span a certain area since it's going to glue right on top of the, uh, on top of the shield that's already here. So I wanted to just make sure that it, um, that it fits correctly, right? So I'm kind of making a, uh, rectangle here. This is, um, PVC board. It's a product, um, called foamed PVC board. I use it a ton. Where do you get that at? Any, uh, it's actually kind of a weird thing to find. You can find it at some hobby stores, but I actually buy it from sign shops. Um, they always have offcuts, like your plastic sign shop. Okay. Um, so any like plastic dealer, they'll actually have uh, offcuts. I mean, I get almost all this stuff for free mm -hmm. um, by just walking in, being like, "Hey, you guys got any cuts today?" Because they can't sell since they're doing industrial work. Yeah. They can't sell the small scraps, but for us, it goes a really, really long way. I like this stuff because it's super light. It's also very thick. I mean, this is like an eighth of an inch thick, but you can cut it with your thick snap-off blade knife, right? We got a question from Ryan Montgomery wants to know, does the baking soda trick work if you're gluing metal to resin? Yes. Yes, it does. We also got we a couple questions, uh, earlier questions about people asking if we were going to release suggested rules for the models. Uh, it's definitely something that we've talked yes, about. Yes, we've talked about it. Um, yeah. and, and that just kind of relies on, you know, our, our ability to get stuff out there. But if we do release rules for the models, they, they are definitely narrative rules. Yeah. They're, they're not canon we've, rules for anything. They're yeah. just kind of guidelines for how you might use them in a game. Right. Like, we've, we've definitely discussed having, like, Hungerford or somebody really quickly kind of write yeah. up. Here's yeah. a really fun scenario to use. It's like, what was the idea you had? Like, the, uh, you the take artillery the... emplacement? Yeah. Yeah. You just have, like, three of them. Because everyone should buy three of this kit. You're, <laughs> you're something, And you man. set you them up something. in an emplacement in the middle, and you fight over them, and you can take them over and shoot other, your enemy models with it. That was the deal. They, you use the rat of the guy that's taking it over. Yep. Like, yeah. So you're doing this cutting, and you're, you're reminding me of... Um, when I work with styrene, <clears throat> you usually don't have to cut very deep. Um, mm -hmm. You can just do a light score and snap your parts. Um, I know a mistake when I first started working with styrene was always <coughs> just trying to cut through the plastic completely, and that will actually sometimes lead to a rougher finish. It does. It does. Um, score and snap. However, this stuff, I tend to... You can see I'm kind of bending this arc right now. Yeah. Little bit. That's the nice thing about this stuff is it holds its form pretty well since it's so thick. Mm -hmm. oh, look at um, that. That's really cool. And uh, so let's see. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, but yeah, I tend to I tend to cut all the way through this uh, foamed PVC. Sorry, I'm so used to calling it by a product. <laughs> Not catching myself. Um, I'm, I, you have to cut all the way through it because it it, it, it want to tear out. If you snap it, you see that right, edge, right. how ratty yeah. that is. Since it is like this almost foam plastic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if you score it and then snap it, you're gonna get this kind of nasty edge, which isn't a problem because uh, you could just it sands so easily. Yeah. But um, 
but yeah, it's uh, I, I tend to just cut all the way through this stuff. Um, let's see, what next? Were you just using a regular emery board to clean that up? I was, yeah. So one of my favorite tools is uh, just the regular old emery board for nails, right? But I take a pair of scissors and I clip an angle on it so I can kind of get in and... As opposed to the $30 diamond cut files that I bought? I mean, I use files plenty. <laughs> I have a file set over here. I mean, the, the other tool I use most actually is, uh, and I have an insider, I believe that you posted, or it's on the it's terrain either. Instagram, on making these sanding blocks. You have not sent me an insider on that. I might have used, it might be on the terrain blog. Um, and I, I just uh, spray glue sandpaper to a piece of wood. And I'll actually use that to like flatten an edge, right? Because right now I know I need this to be at an angle. So I'll actually take the sanding block and I'll create that angle that it needs to glue on so it all sits flush, right? And you can use the uh, same idea for emery boards, like just get some popsicle sticks. And if you have sandpaper, you can just, you know, glue them onto the popsicle stick for a frugal emery board. Exactly. You or could, even take a, you take could a, sandpaper your whole workstation and just, you know, I've actually <laughs> done that. Rub it on pinch. anywhere yeah, yeah. you happen to be standing. I literally, I had a big, uh, it was a casting for a film I was working on. I had a big uh, thing I needed to sand down and I was just running out of time. <laughs> and I literally spray glued. Don't do this. Uh, I, 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 I love to just show off how to do stuff. And one of the lines is, "Don't ever do this." Well, it's just bad form. <laughs> I, I was really in a rush, and I knew. So, bestine is a chemical you can remove spray adhesive with. It's fine, but it's really bad form to do this in your shop. <laughs> so, uh, I just sprayed my whole table down and just laid sandpaper over my entire work desk and just started like sanding these big pieces literally on my table. They were yeah. like, did you really just turn your, you know, workstation into sandpaper? Well, I mean, if you have a spare desk no one's using, then it, it should be fine, but... Right. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking this styrene rod, and I'm just very, very carefully cutting some pieces off of it. Uh, this is the longer way of doing it, but I, I like to show this because it needs... It, it, it takes less tools, right? So you can yeah. buy tiny... I know Evan swears by his tiny little hole punches, which I use a lot oh, as well. Oh, yes. Um, you can buy at like a craft store these tiny, tiny hole punches where you can punch rivets out of styrene. I want... Put that under the uh, the close-up cam there, Danny. I want people to see how tiny these things are. So just put the tip of the... T and the tip of the blade with one of those on there. Yeah, like the hole punch, I, I believe, is made for paper, but it works great for styrene. Right. And you, you get it in the scrapbooking section, but... Uh, I don't like to, uh, when I'm teaching people how to do stuff, I don't want to show them. Here's a million specialty tools. Yeah. Um, so I'm showing you how to do it just out of the styrene rod that you might have bought from the, uh, from the store. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do is I clip it, and you can actually pick it up with the tip of your blade and carefully kind of place the rivet there and use your nail to leave it on there. Um, another thing I do if I have to move really quick is I basically pre-kick the edge with zip kicker. And you let it kind of evaporate, but there's still going to be a residue, so your stuff's going to dry really quick when you drop it on. Mm -hmm. Oopsies. You mean super glue accelerant? Yes, sorry. <laughs> so I have a question for you while you're doing this. Sir. If I were to do this at home, all of those rivets, rivets would be buried in a glob of super glue. Why? Because I suck at super glue application. No, so that's well, the trick I'm showing so you. So how do you now. not use a ton of super glue oh, that uh, buries the rivet when you... Right. I should have explained that. So another thing I'm doing is, you see this piece of styrene here? I poured out super glue onto it. Okay. Um, Which, yeah, we, can, we cannot see on camera because it's clear on white, but it right. is there, the glue is there. There's a glob of our super glue on it. And so what I do is I actually pick up, I pick up the uh, rivet with my knife, and I just gently dip it in the super glue, and then I place it on. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So it's all about just not dipping it <laughs> super deep into the thing. Zip kick it. And if you want to get like super nitpicky about surface finish, um, you don't have to use the X-Acto, although at the first speed, I would recommend the X-Acto, but you can also use just like tweezers or something. You are about your tweezers. <laughs> Evan, Evan's, so Evan and I are pretty different uh, model makers. Um, he is... <laughs> exceptionally good at some very particular things that I am very weak at. Um, and it's really, really fun for me to watch and talk shop with him 
because he's like a very pristine, like clean plastic model maker, and I'm like fast <laughs> and well, carve. I carve I mean, and like I'm everyone in this room has seen your workshop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's why we uh, were great compliments. We to work each really other. well together. Um, but that's something that I always enjoy watching Evan do is like seeing what uh, what his processes are. Like I never, I can't remember the last time I used tweezers. Oh yeah. No, because I, I just – here's my thing. I'm always priming it so thickly with, like, a high build – like, a, pr a sandable primer. Yeah. That the reason a lot of people want to use tweezers is it doesn't leave any sort of marking or right. marring. I need you to back up a second. On the part? Yeah, what's up? You said sandable primer. What's a sandable primer versus a regular primer? So, actually, it's funny. Um, our P3 primer yeah. is actually sandable. So what, so, what do you mean when you say sandable primer? Okay, so when I – I don't know what I'm allowed to say, brand-wise. Automotive primer? Cool. Okay. Sorry. Um, I'm new at this, guys. Uh, automotive primer is normally sandable. And the reason why this is important for model making, and I use it a ton, is uh, especially gray. Um, you can prime your object, you can, and then you'll be able to see any imperfections. Now, the nice thing about using a sandable primer, since it's for auto, since it's for auto body stuff, um, what it's meant to do is show you your imperfections, and then you can sand it and buff those imperfections out. Does that remove the primer? Yes. Then you reprime? But then you reprime. Okay. So I'm constantly going back and forth and repriming stuff, right? Um, and so uh, so since, I, since I'm constantly repriming stuff, if I have any sort of slight marring on a surface or a detail that I was working on, it's not going to really matter because those tiny little marks are just going to get filled in as I prime yeah. it a bunch of times. But um, you guys want to know how messed up my brain is, like... Just me knowing that there's a blemish under that surface will just mess with me, so I'll just have to have, just fix Can it before. Push up into the camera just a little bit more. Yep. There you go. So here I'm actually using the uh, baking soda because I didn't do a very good job, <laughs> and I actually want to use some of the gap filling that uh, the super glue or that the uh, baking soda provides. And you're never going to really see the back of this thing, so I'm actually going to shove a little bit more glue in there for stability and let it kind of wick in. I'll take the edge of this piece of styrene. This is driving you nuts. I, I'm looking at Evan's <laughs> face right now, and this is where, like, we differ so much. Like, this literally, his shoulders just rise, like, like rose. <laughs> like, yeah, there's you, a... You mean you're smearing glue there's all a, over? There's a lot of crimes with your uh, method of <laughs> model making. Oh my god, so <laughs> mad. No, it's it's bad. Like we're, we're gonna have to change Danny's stream name to Hobby Crimes. <laughs> so as you can see, we've got this guard now made. It's pretty neat. Um we can glue it on whenever we want. Uh I'm probably going to start working on the um on the cannon. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how this barrel gets made. Right, Evan, this is actually a really good time for Evan to kind of talk about while I get this started, how you made the uh some of the modifications on this guy, which Wait, we got to, um, I guess, hold it over here, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so basically, I started uh, sketching a lot of just solid sil silhouettes, just solid black silhouettes, just to determine the overall shape I was looking for. Um, and I do maybe like 10 silhouettes and then pick my favorite one. And then on once the next step is, would be to like add detail within the silhouette. Um and then after that, I'd basically just go around looking for uh, any usable existing kits I can use. Um, I mean, that's pretty much... Kind of like what we're doing here, but yeah. the, uh, the, these awesome, you know, the barrel. How'd you end up doing that? The barrel? we're about to do something like this, the same technique. All right. Um, See all these beautiful those... holes that he cut in? It's so nice. <laughs> yeah, so the barrels are basically just varying sizes of styrene tubes um uh and i just clipped those with my regular modeling s uh, snips um the the holes and like the cooling shroud that gets a little more complicated you want to sort of eyeball as best you can where you want to place the dots and just mark them with a pen or pencil and then i took um your leather, the leather punch that's sitting off camera on your desk, I believe. Yes. To uh, mark uh, some recesses where I want to take a drill and actually drill those holes in. Oh, which now is the perfect time to actually use this thing. Thank you for bringing this up. 
Um, so this is a leather punch. It has a uh, it has different sizes that you can use. And if you don't push all the way through, it's not going to punch through. So we use it a right. lot to make little rivets because it just kind of embosses the rivets from the back side. So I'm going to make this little plate, right? To cover up and, some of the detail. And when you're making can a... Can you put that on the palette cam so we can get a real close view of what you're doing? So when you're doing rivets with a leather punch, you, you kind of got to have a, a fine touch. Otherwise, you can punch through pretty easily or like crack the, the surface. Try to get in there just a little bit further if you can, Danny. There right above... Go. Yeah, there you go. See, I'm like gently kind of pushing in there. Yeah. But now you can see it's got... All these kind of embossed rivets. There it goes. That's a good angle right there. So it's super, super fast. Sorry, it's very sloppy because I was can't look at what I'm doing from this angle. But uh, normally, yeah, you could measure and make it all clean and nice. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this. And since I carved out the back of this thing, it's all nasty. Um, I'm just going to put some super glue on it. So someone's asking about the the parts that went into the aircraft gun. Um, Jeff, do you recognize the kits that were used? Uh, I recognized a lot of the parts from it, but there's a lot of scratch built in there. A lot of scratch built in there. It's it's the base of it is the trencher, the blockhouse. Yeah, the blockhouse. The front of it is the Rails interceptor. No, it's the Vulcan's cowcatcher shield. And the top of it is the body part for the Man of War Chariot. That's what I recognized off the top of my head. Also, what I'm doing now, real quick, um, is I'm kind of tapering, tapering the end of this styrene rod because I know it's got to kind of, it's not going to fit perfectly into this. Um, Oops. Oops, that was a wrong. Into one. this hole here, it's not going to fit perfectly, but I want to make it fit right. So I'm just kind of tapering it so that it has more of a mechanical bond. Um, what do you taper it with? A knife my, or sand? A knife, and, like I carved it with a knife, and then I hit it with sandpaper. Okay. Um, so let's see. How long do I want this to be? Okay. Make a little marking. So Alec has, um, on Facebook, has a question for Danny. Uh, he wants to know how you would make shells and pow powder charges for the cannon. He's thinking about building a few of these and wants to put each on a 120 base with a gun crew. Sh like, uh, yeah, so any ideas how to build like shells and or like powder charges? Casings? I guess, yeah, that's what he says. Yeah, so. super easy. Here, check this out. This is one of my favorite, <laughs> this is one of my favorite tricks ever. Um, so let's see, let's do it with a piece of styrene tube. All right, so we've got tube. Um, we're going to make like a spent casing right now. Actually, you know what? We're going to do it out of solid, solid styrene. Um, so this is a styrene rod. You can literally clip a section of it. And you can do this with all sorts of different sizes. That was the tube. Whoops. <laughs> Where's my rod? All right, whatever, we'll use this rod here. <laughs> um, clip a section of it to make like your bullet casing size, right? Um, sand the edge flush, or like clean, so it's all nice and 90 degrees and clean and stuff. All right, and then you take the back of your blade, we'll use this one, the back side of it. And you literally, whoopsies. Maybe don't do it on such a small piece. Literally no. roll it with the back of your blade. When you work with styrene, you're going to have parts flying everywhere constantly. And you when you... This, it we, creates that uh, indentation. Yeah, a little, okay, yeah, you can kind of see it a little bit. It's really hard to see. Yeah. But if you use the back of your blade and just roll it along the... Uh, roll it along the styrene tube, it's going to create kind of that, like... But and oh yeah okay that is the bullet mm -hmm. case. wow that make yeah sense? yeah um where's this on the camera it's oh man I wish it wasn't white it's so hard to see but yeah then you literally just clip it shorter and clip this out snap it there we go and you've got a little spent bullet casing and there are a million ways to do it you can do it out of tube and just hole punch little pieces of plastic and glue it to the end of it yep. um. 
I mean, honestly, if you just paint some rod like brass color, it's going to look like a bullet casing. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. But that's a really uh, a good trick to like add lines and stuff. I'll make like fake hinges by taking styrene rod and just rolling the back edge of my blade on it. Now I'm adding this uh, extension to the barrel. All right, and then uh, the nice thing about styrene tube when you buy it from the hobby store is they sell it so it actually like intentionally telescopes onto each other, right? So you can see like... Oh yeah, you've showed me, you've showed me this trick before. This is awesome. Here are a bunch of different pieces of styrene. Can you put that under the uh, pellet can there? Right, so they'll sometimes sell packs where there'll be a variety of different sizes so that you can make these telescoping pieces. Right, and so that's absolutely fantastic for you know, uh, gun barrels and stuff, because I can add a detail like this, you know, right on top of it, make it look cool, and it's super easy. Let's see. Sorry, we're, Doug Hamilton and I are sharing laughs. Uh, he thinks that if you cut yourself live on a live stream, that our ratings will go through the roof. They really would. I also, agree. On uh, on Instagram, I was going to probably blow this thing up afterwards <laughs> and not tell you. I shouldn't have told you that. I was actually going to be like, for those of you that didn't watch and got me canceled, this is how I feel about it. And I was going to take a propane torch to this nicely done like this yeah. thing on, yeah. on Instagram. But now I'm not. I, can't. I still am. I really want to blow this thing up. I Wilson told me that if I get my demo license, um, I can blow stuff up. And so I'm really considering it. So, I don't know if it's a good idea for you to get your demo license. What was that? I said, I don't know if it's a good idea for you to get yeah, your demo license. Yeah, nobody seems to know if that's a good idea for me, <laughs> except for me. I think it's a great idea. What um, could possibly go wrong? So also, as you guys saw real quick, a really good trick to uh, cut styrene tube is instead of trying to like, a lot of people want to like, when they start out, they want to just push through it. Literally just take a big knife and roll it. So it's the same technique as making that uh, the little divot. You're just going all the way through. Well, um, no, I'm uh, I'm using the sharp end of the blade. Oh, the divot. I missed that. Yeah, so you're, so using the the, divot, you're using the you're using the back, back edge, edge of the end of blade the blade to, push to basically it in. push a line into oh, okay. it. Okay, yeah. that is good to know. It also works very well if you use a file. It'll give you a thicker line by doing that. <laughs> if you cut if you cut yourself on live stream, then uh, Screw Fizzle says that's uh, that's going to be called the Gubbins Award. Dude, I'm telling you, that character you is me. You are not that character. I am that character. <laughs> you are Widget. No. Yes. I'm Gubbins. No, you're, you're Widget. You're totally Widget. I hate you, Evan. <laughs> Why am I Widget? Why can't I be like a little goofy goblin that blows things up? It's cool. Don't answer all at once, guys. Because <laughs> you're not. So you're using uh, like a plastic solvent right now to to bond the pieces, right? Yes, I actually, and not, e not to even talk about brand names, I'm super cheap uh, when it comes to the plastic cement. So this is, uh, when you're using styrene to styrene, a good trick is to use a plastic solvent glue, right? It actually chemically melts the, uh, melts the plastic together. Um, and so you can actually lay your pieces down and it's so thin that you could take your brush and it'll wick the plastic cement into it. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of what I did. I, I dropped this on here and just wicked it in. But I'm really cheap about the plastic glue that I use. Uh, I actually just go to the hardware store. Um, people like to spend a ton of money at hobby stores to buy uh, plastic cements. Um, but this is actually just uh, MEK, which you can buy in a gallon at, uh, at Home Depot for like five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, for some reason, it melts plastic together, and it's less toxic than like weld, like weld on. Yeah, and it's great because it like bonds instantly, instantly. So you, you can work so fast. <laughs> now, do yes. not be mistaken with MEKP. Those are very, very different things. Uh, MEKP will melt out your eyes. MEK <laughs> is a less toxic, cheap plastic cement. Do not buy MEKP. That's what you use to uh, cure fiberglass. Where did my... I I would like to point out right now that we're about 45 minutes into the stream, not even 45 minutes, and how much progress you have made on this canon. Like, some people might be able to stop right there. Like, just having 
having a chassis with some wheels and a gun barrel on. If you want it to look lame. Whoa. <laughs> that's like what you would do, Tony. I feel, Our viewers are better than that. I feel personally attacked right now. You should. Now. I hate you. But yeah, but just knowing that that's all it takes to get this far. Like it's it all just came together very quickly. Why is it mm-hmm. tipping? Makes me sad. Don't you have stuff to put on the back still? You don't know. Pretty sure I know. You don't know. Hey guys, it's Friday. It is Friday. Long weekend. Apparently the Puyallup Fair started. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. The what? what? Puyallup Fair. The, lo- gotta, the local state fair. You got to do the Puyallup, Danny. So one Sounds of our like a dance. I think one of our viewers in in Twitch is at the fair right now. Watching you build terrain. <laughs> That's amazing. I hope so. Do we have people actually watching me build terrain right now? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, there have been a lot of people like thinking, wow. we've had some comments saying this is a great stream. They love what you're doing. There's been some questions. That's great. Maybe I won't get canceled. It's no, just... there was literally a hashtag, don't cancel Danny. Oh, was that Ryan Montgomery? Uh, it was. I love you, Ryan. <laughs> I think this is just proof that people will watch anything. Anything. Exactly. Man, you guys are... <laughs> I'm not allowed to say suckers in there, so. which I just did. Man, you guys fall for anything. I don't even, I can't even read. I don't know what I'm doing. I, can tell you I mean, that's true. That's, that's kind of half the fun, watching you not know what you're doing and then manage to make cool stuff I mean, we were on Get cool Your Paint on anyway. yesterday, and you were like, Denny, what color are you using now? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. This mess uh, of brown this now one? on my palette, <laughs> and this will work. You know, like... But Danny, sell our paints. I was like, everyone should buy our paints. They're actually the best paints. But like, I don't know what color I'm using right this second. Ortic olive mixed with five other browns. It's great. Now I'm going to cut this little ring. Oh, I also brought up something dope to show you guys that Evan also made out of styrene because he's a beast at styrene. Check this thing out. This uh, awesome, awesome bomb rack. And now, how much of that is scratch built, Evan? Um, it's like, <laughs> like ninety-five like, yeah. percent scratch built. Yeah. Like almost all of it. Throw, uh, throw it into the palette cam just to get a close-up of those those bombs, bombs in there. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and yeah, you can move that up. Look at that. The bombs were the only thing that weren't completely scratch built. What were they? They were the uh, the. Um, apes. They were from Monster Apocalypse. Oh, the, the ones oh. that they hold in their their yeah, feet. Yeah, right. The backside where from the Mompok version one. No, uh, the metal ape. You know the the troopers. Do they have those? Yeah, bombers. Yeah, we don't. We haven't released those yet. Have we? Yeah, <laughs> they're out. You can literally buy them. Anyway, uh, we sculpted yeah. uh, Evan uh, sculpted domes on the tip of them, and then we yeah, with just some it. brown stuff. Yep, our brown aluminum putty, which is so nice. Let's see. All right, so here's another example of where I would use my sanding block. Um, Literally, just to like flatten that edge, make it all clean and nice. Hold this against the table, sand it in a circle. What should we do next for this live stream, guys? That's up to you. I want to do something with the bunker. With the blockhouse? Yeah. 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 Someone in chat earlier recommended portable force field generators. Mm. Like something, if we could do maybe a retribution theme. Yeah, the problem is I already did that for hostile territory. What no quarter was that? No quarter prime, I literally did a, uh, a hostile territories about uh, using bits that you can buy from our online store. Yeah. Um, and making, with a wooden ball, making a force field generator, and Hungerford wrote a whole scenario for it. So check that out. I can't remember the issue offhand, but we only made six. Maybe so. a Signar thing then. Like yeah, a lightning generator Sc- style thing. Screw Fizzle is asking for more uh, Infernals like buildings. Um, then there's a question about whether Infernals actually have buildings, but, but uh, what about uh, some Infernals style terrain? That'd be fun. Infernals, I'm a little infernaled out right now from the Iron Gauntlet table. Uh, Infernals definitely have buildings because we made a giant a one. Giant for tower. The giant tower. Poor lock and load. So another one of my favorite tricks oh, ever is googly eyes. I can't believe I just I forgot that that giant table. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, we made. It. Yes. They. So googly Infernals eyes are great. definitely have buildings. Googly eyes are great. <laughs> Let me tell you about noises. googly eyes. Uh, googly eyes make tiny domes. If you paint them metallic, they look like a tiny dome or like a hatch door. See that? Go over here. Boop boop boop. So that little that little hatch piece on the back yep. is, a googly is just eye? a googly eye. This is the googly eye. And I can confirm, uh, having shaken this piece, that it does sound like a googly yeah, eye. Yeah, I do that to bother people too, because a lot of gamers for some reason like hate like Jordan Lamb hates that noise <laughs> when he picks up my terrain. And so I just put as many little like I've dropped ball bearings into my terrain and just capped it out just to bother him before. <laughs> Why do I do this? Yeah, so when you're scratch building or uh, kit bashing, like look for a lot of found objects because you'll be surprised what works. I, you know, I would think that would take like a, a special kind of eye um, to look for that because it's real. It seems like it's really easy, and I know that I would do this to overlook things because thinking about too much about what it is. Like I would have never considered googly eye because yeah. it's a googly eye, and in not thinking about the fact that when you paint a googly eye and it no longer looks like an eyeball, right. uh, that it has this, this particular shape to it that's very useful. For those of you that do, uh, any of you guys that do like cosplay stuff, um, googly eyes are absolutely fantastic for uh, rivets on your armor. Yeah, it's all about recognizing the silhouettes of items, right? Yeah. Yes. Just don't use them if you're trying to be a stealthy character. Well, the nice thing about them, too, is they're, they're light. I mean, they're hollow, so they're super light. And that's another thing I have to worry about with anything I build is is the weight, right? So let's see. Tweaking. Nah. All right, let's make that top thingy. What's it called, Evan? The little coolie bar? Top thingy? That guy. Oh, I think it's like a some sort of like gas piston, so you can uh, adjust the type of... Yeah, yeah. We're going to make that thing now. Oh, I can't seem to hold this right. Like if you're using different types of rounds in your cannon or something. Yeah. We're going to make one of those. So... I prepped this part, it's a pain in the butt. I drilled it out so that it fits uh, this styrene rod here. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna kinda clip this. Oh, use my clippers. We have the technology. All right. We know that we can slide this through. Where's my telescoping piece? I have a piece of tube that fits over this. Where'd it go? This guy? Maybe this guy, no. Oh well. Fail. So I cut this groove in here that fits over this tube. We need to cut that even a little bit more. And this is somewhere where I definitely like use a file if I planned ahead and brought one up here. We'll go in with this emery board. Can you go up a little higher? There you go, or sorry, more, more towards the top of the camera. Awesome. We'll see how that fits. Got it. We're getting some requests here for different stuff. Something pirate themed for your next project. Mm, we could definitely. We have the bits for pirate themed stuff. <laughs> Trust me, I have so many pirate bits. It's like one of my favorite things when we uh, get slight miscasts. I can use a lot of them for terrain. Mm -hmm. And so many of the like the pirate bits are so good. As um, a kit basher, we definitely have access to an embarrassment of wealth. Yes, yes, yes we do. Yes. Yeah, if you've ever, uh, I think most people haven't seen the warehouse, but it's uh, kind of like a little dream grocery store of walking back there with just bins of really parts yep. next yep. to each other, just lined up. Bins upon bins of stuff. One of our previous convention managers had his hooch crawler, and that thing was an amazing kit I bash. I that thing. It was a hooch hauler that had been infected by the Legion of Everblight. <laughs> well, his entire uh, Northkin army was yeah, uh, that's right. blighted. Was a blighted out troll, trollkin creel. Yep. JR, if you're watching this, I miss you and love you. We love you, JR. He's, He's not, not watching. watching. He's not watching. 
<laughs> some people leave and then stay and hang out and watch our streams, but. So I'm very carefully, very carefully <laughs> trying to relieve a little bit more of this material. And on, you know, I probably should have made this out of just two pieces and just glued, you know. Sure. But There's this works too, though. But this works too. Evan's like, dude, this you could have literally just drilled a, a <laughs> hole in a square piece of styrene and then glued two little styrene strips to it and called it a day. But whatever I'm works an for idiot. you is fine. So there's no right way to do it. Yeah, exactly. there is. No, no, there, no, there are twelve ways to skin a cat. I think is the proper the phrase that a lot of people use. Except maybe it's just me. You ever skinned a cat? No, that's disgusting. Where does that phrase come from? More than one way to not twelve ways. <laughs> no, there are exactly 12 ways. Exactly. Tried and true methods. Should we go into it? Is that not appropriate for the Check question? your library. Because I will totally tell you how to skin You know it. what we should <laughs> talk about is that once this stream is done, we will be posting an insider of all the prep work and the step-by-step -step, uh, process that Danny used to build this as well. Yeah, I worked pretty hard on all this stuff for you guys. We tried to make sure that we could set it up so you could get the bits. I even made a tutorial for those of you who can read. Um, it's going to go live because hopefully this is something we can do like once a month for you guys if you enjoy it. Um, let's see. This will slide through. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, no. I broke it. Whoopsies. What happens when you break it, Danny? What do you do? Glue it back on. This time I'm going to use super glue because I'm impatient. Don't worry about any mistakes you, you make. You can always fix everything. Everything. Except for clears. What is a clear? Clears. What's that? What is uh, a clear? <laughs> gluing in like a clear piece of plastic for like a window. Oh, or yeah. Like and it like acrylic. fogs up or you get it's glue on it. Yeah. Well, no, you just rip it out and put in a new piece. In a new piece. Or you just paint over it. Which is great. And then say, that's what I here, meant to do. But on like a movie or something where you get something custom laser cut. And mm. stuff, yeah. Oh yeah. my God. I hate, I hate working clear. But like, don't get super attached to the things you're working on. Like take risks because that's the only way you're going to grow. Right. Or blow it up with a, uh, blow it up at the end, please. Yep. I really at this rate, blow. we're going to have to change the name of the stream from Hobby Hangout to Things and people Danny hates. <laughs> Wait, what? Why did it, why? Because you keep bringing up the things you ate. Like what? Like me. I don't <laughs> like you. <laughs> but I have a lot of love to give, Jeff. A lot of love. I know. So I've shared a room with you at conventions. Oh, man. I'm sorry. So we've what, got about we got about five minutes left, oh, man. and I know yeah, and so I know that there's more to do on this, uh, but Not I kind of I I want to see those those uh, back stabilizer legs go on. Oh, yeah, let's see. Kind of kind of see how much for, we got. You know, five ish minutes. We're not All we're right. not well, holding to a in five -ish an minutes. eleven o'clock stop time. Whoopsies, that's not where that goes. Evan just died. <laughs> Like, why did you literally just smear glue? <laughs> <laughs> we did, I think we needed like an, uh, a camera on Evan's face that just like takes yeah. a still shot every time he's yeah, just a uncomfortable with how Danny's doing it. <laughs> or we could just bring up the meme of the dog sitting in the house on fire. It's oh, fine. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, fine. that's, that's Evan fine. all the time here. <laughs> it's like, this is fine. <laughs> I'll get those back stabilizers on in just a second here. Oh my goodness. Come on. When we were talking about doing the stream, Danny was telling me, he's like, now Tony, I know that you like it when things are clean and look good on camera. He's like, you know I'm I'm gonna totally ignore that. Like it's never gonna happen. All right, so uh these. Let's add these back braces. How did I do that? I think I just clipped it. Oh, Tanner says the term for the, the stabilizer legs is outriggers. I said mine first, so I'm correct. Look at the big brain on Tanner. I mean, something's got to go in that big square head of his. <laughs> Such a square. All right, let's see. Stabilizer legs. I refuse to use any of Tanner's knowledge. All right, so I cut these here. And I think I cut these here. 
Oh, so you actually modded the legs. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. They have an angle. They're not just yeah. like full on, just you straight can, parts. You, can you had see to see in the image how much they bend. Yeah, I see that. They have a big angle there. Just gonna shove some glue here, dry that on nuts. Let's see. So if you're gonna kit bash this particular model, um, you don't have to be like super precise in following the instructions. In fact, I'd encourage you to sort of do your own thing and find your own placement. Right. Yeah, this is like meant a, to be a jumping off point for you guys. Yeah, like really make it your own. Yeah, no, have fun with it. So what you're saying is Danny's good, but he's not that good. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I'm saying too. Audience, you can do better. <laughs> do it. Can that be our hashtag for this? It's like reading rainbow. You be better than Danny. Do I think we can just Take go with don't look. be Danny. Don't be Danny. Book. Don't do what rainbow. Danny does. So. So now that I've established that angle, this one's for you, Evan. Oh, yeah? I'm just going to shove the glue <laughs> and do that. <laughs> so that it sits flat on the table. I'm just going to shove a big old glob of glue because no matter what, I'm going to have to connect these points with uh, like epoxy, like a brown putty. Yeah, yeah. After. So I just want to make sure I get that kind of angle on there correctly. Then I'll zip kick it. You know, this part might be a bit fragile. If you really want to go all at it, like pin it probably. Mm -hmm. But I have whatever. a question. What? Um, what a surprise! If you if you are really bad at adding glue and it tends to be gloppy and then and you know kind of surrounds the the join where you put the glue, is there a good way to remove that so it doesn't look like I mean, so it doesn't look terrible? And I'm totally asking for a friend. Um, uh, you can basically just I mean sometimes you just kind of have to carve it off, man. Just using a knife. Yep. I mean, if you went that far, like, I try to be careful about how I apply things. So, like, right now, I have this weird little silicone well. I have a chisel tip exacto. And I'm basically just going to scoop up some of the glue on the chisel tip. And I'm going to peel this part up just a little bit. And just wick it underneath wick it the under edge? Wick it under there, yeah. So that I want that, the shield to kind of bond to the wheel, even though it would never actually do that, just for stability of the gaming piece. All right. I'll throw a little glue on there. Uh, they do make, we don't, I mean, our super glue is amazing, but there is also like really thinner viscosity super glue that exists, and you can mm -hmm. actually uh, wick it in almost like styrene cement. And you can just use like a toothpick exactly. as an applicator. Exactly. So your lack of some chemistry science answer to remove glue means that my, There's friend, no way to my just, friend just needs to get better at putting glue yeah, on. Yeah, sometimes you just got to get good, Tony. Okay. My friend, you His mean friend. Tony's friend. Then I'll probably have this cross beam. Let's see. Can I do that? Yeah. How are we doing on time? We're oh, good. We're, we're over. So we gotta oh, start. We gotta we, go. we gotta wrap it up pretty soon. But go ahead and finish what you're doing. Like I said, we're not we're not hard and fast on the uh, one hour rule. We just like to put on a good show, show people how to do it, give them some tips, give them inspired. That thing almost hit me. Good. <laughs> Uh, dirt set, that dropper is full of super glue accelerant. Hmm? Someone what, yeah. in chat asked what was in the dropper bottle. Yeah. So One uh, dropper super glue, is super glue. Super glue accelerant. Um, then, it's a hyper, hypodermic dropper bottle is what this thing's called. And then you have a second dropper bottle that has the baking soda in it. It's not a dropper bottle. It's almost like a baster. Like it's it's a, got like a little squeeze it's push. A puff, puff. Yeah. Oh, poof, I think poof, the poof, technical poof. term is bellows. Man, what's yeah. the, what's all the dropping technical terms? Oh, Trying to teach things on this stuff. show. It's a baking soda baster. <laughs> all right, so how much left is there to do on I this mean, to get it? Not much. I'm basically done here. Give me one sec. Uh, I need to add the, like... Whatever the top coolie thingy is, still, still need to cut the piece for that. But we're not going to get to that. What did Evan Evan call it? The cooling shroud? Is that it? 
Cooling shroud? Yeah. What are you guys talking about? The other piece. Piece on the front. Um, the second tubey thing. Danny, someone asked if you use the baking soda technique when you're doing terrain as well. Yes. Does you use it anytime you're gluing anything? Not every time I glue things. Like right oh, now, because it does I'm have the, the zip kicker, but because yeah. I don't want it to add a ton of texture fill. right there. Uh, but no, I use it for ru- like anything that's going to be m- like metal and weathered. I use it a lot because it actually you can paint it up and it'll look like rust. That slight grit. Well, that's super janky and wonky, but uh, it'll do the job. Um, but yeah, I mean, you guys can see it. It's basically done. Yeah. I mean, add the little thingy there, which is basically just going to be sliding a piece of tube through there and cutting it at the right uh, right length and call it a day. All right, let's go ahead and okay. do that. One, one last time in case you missed it, I'm posting the link to the uh, store so you can buy these parts and get going on this kit yourselves. And also, for those of you who are um, fans of Get Your Paint On uh, and are familiar with hashtag P3 Painters, we also have our hashtag for the Hobby Hangout, which is P3 Kit Bashers. So when you Mm -hmm. have built this kit or any other um, kits, privateer press models, please, please, please send in your photos um, to with the hashtag to P3 Kit Bashers to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram especially, and um, we take a look at those photos, and uh, when we see cool stuff, we will show them off on our stream. I'm really sad that you didn't go with P3 Terrainters. <laughs> we should or Hobby Crimes. Hobby Crimes, yeah. With Danny Samuels. I love that. I just glued my finger <laughs> to this model. Awesome. So, in our next hobby hangout will be September 13th, mm-hmm. and it will not be with Danny. It'll, <laughs> Danny will be the Danny will be the special guest on the second mic. Emphasis but, on the word special. <laughs> but the primary host will be one of our engineers in the back, mm-hmm. Brian McLaughlin, and he will be showing you guys how to assemble a primal archon. For our regular stream schedule, we have Dev Hangouts on Wednesdays. Get your paint on on Thursdays. The Staff Showdown. The next game is Monster Apocalypse mm-hmm. on September 10th. And then the next Hobby Hangout, September 13th. Danny, put, put, say goodbye to everybody. Put, put, put the... Bye. Oh, why did you do that? 